In this tutorial, we'll do two examples involving single mean hypothesis testing. I want to start off with a bit of theory which will help us in both of these questions. A null hypothesis is a hypothesis set to be nullified or refuted in order to support an alternative hypothesis. When used, the null hypothesis is presumed true until statistical evidence in the form of a hypothesis test indicates otherwise. Usually, the alternate hypothesis is the possibility that an observed effect is genuine. We denote the null hypothesis as H sub 0, and the alternative hypothesis as H sub A or H sub 1. The final conclusion, once the test has been carried out, is always given in terms of the null hypothesis. That is, we either reject H0 in favor of H1, or do not reject H0. With that being said, the first question reads, the average waiting time for a patient to wait in a waiting room is 20 minutes. A dentist has recently started a new private practice and wants to estimate how long patients are waiting on average in the waiting room before their appointments. He randomly selects 50 patients for observation and records how many minutes each waits. The mean waiting time is 18 minutes with a standard deviation of 3.6 minutes. Based on the data, is there statistical evidence that the mean waiting time is significantly different than 20 minutes? There's a lot of information here that needs to be sorted out. The first thing that I want to do is write down all the information that's provided. First of all, we are given 20 minutes as the average waiting time. That's the average waiting time, generally speaking, for the population. So to denote that, we use the symbol mu, which looks like a U, but it's a Greek letter is equal to 20 minutes. Whenever we want to show the population's average, we use this letter. Whereas if we want to show the mean of a sample, we use X bar. And in that case, it's the study that this dentist did for the 50 patients. And he found that the mean wait time was 18 minutes. In addition, he actually samples 50 patients, which is large enough to be considered a large population. Generally, if n is more than 30, it's large. So here, n is equal to 50 people. The standard deviation for the sample is 3.6 minutes. For a sample's standard deviation, we use the letter s. And that's 3.6. However, we would use sigma if it was the standard deviation of the entire population, which we don't have and we don't need. Once I've written down everything that I know, I'll write down my hypothesis. So I'll say that my null hypothesis, which we denote as h sub 0, will be mu is equal to 20. So let's see if this is true or not. The alternative hypothesis, if we say that mu is equal to 20, the alternative will be mu is not equal to 20. Next, we need to determine the significance level, which we denote as alpha. They haven't given it to us in this question, so if they don't give it to you, just use 0 0.05. I'll say alpha is 0 0.05. At this point, it's important to mention that because the n value is greater than 30, in our case it's 50, we will have to use the z test as opposed to the student's t test moving forward. Eventually, after we find the value for z, we can then use that to calculate the p value which ultimately will tell us whether to reject the null hypothesis or not. So using this formula right here, I'll write down z is equal to the sample average of 18 minus 20 over s, which represents our standard deviation, over the square root of 50. Let's use our calculator. 18 subtract 20 divided by 3.6, divided by again, the square root of 50. We end up with negative 3.928, negative 3.928. This value will serve as our critical values in the probability distribution chart. In case that's confusing, let me show you what I mean. So this is a probability distribution, much like a normal distribution. And remember our hypothesis was mu is equal to. Whenever you have equal to and not equal to as your alternative, we use a two-tail test. So we have this tail end and this tail end, where this tail represents negative 3.928, 
and this one represents positive 3.928, and in the middle, 0. This will serve as our rejection region. Using this value, we will calculate the probability value. And the probability value, if it's less than 0 0.05, which was what we chose for alpha, if it's less than 0 0.05, then we reject the null hypothesis. Here's how to calculate the p-value. We write down p-val, and it's a two-tailed test, so I'll write down two times the probability that z is less than negative 3.928 using the z table here with all our values, the smallest value here is negative 3.4. This is negative 3.9. And negative 3.4 gives us 0 as the probability. So we can say that this whole thing becomes 0, 2 times 0. If we interpret this as 0%, it barely goes beyond 2.5%, which represents those tail ends. Hence, it lies inside the rejection region. We conclude by writing 0 is less than 0 0.05, the value we chose for alpha, therefore will reject the null hypothesis. There is sufficient evidence at 0 0.05 significance level to conclude a significant difference of the means between 18 and 20. If you would like to see the answer to question number 2, make sure you watch part 2 of this series where we cover the solution. Hope to see you soon.